Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Writer's Block. Uh, we had uh, an amazing outpouring of views um, and uh, likes and everything, and some really nice comments uh, to our last video about Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter. We want to say you know, thank you for that. Um, and this is something that's just been, oh, I'm very eager uh, to talk about this because in that, that video and also in the conversation that was happening when Brandon did his massively successful Kickstarter, uh, there were concerns, uh, one about traditional publishing, but also about self-publishing. You know, what, what is this going to mean for self-publishing? Is everybody going to start to try to do uh, Kickstarters that are self-published authors? Uh, can any of them, you know, even get near Brandon's success? And also, is Brandon taking all the oxygen in the room? I read on a lot of, you know, Reddit forums concern about, you know, if people are giving their money to, you know, to Brandon's campaign, uh, they're not going to have any money left over to, you know, purchase books from self-published authors. Um, in the last video, we did talk about two other uh, self-published authors that had both done Kickstarters and both were successful. But right after uh, our, our video came out, a few days later, Will White, uh, who's a, a big uh, self-published author within fantasy, even has his own little niche called Progression Fantasy, um, came out with his own Kickstarter. He's got a funny little video kind of reacting to, to uh, Brandon's kind of um, looking to, to parody it, if you will. And the reason I want to talk about it is because, uh, now granted, as I said, very successful self-published writer, um, but his campaign is got six days left and he is over half a million dollars. So I just thought it bared talking about that's our little, that's a little intro. Feel free you to uh, to jump in uh, with your thoughts and then, you know, I'll, I'll say some other stuff, but that's just the uh, beginning of the topic for today. I think it goes without saying that nobody's going to touch the massive numbers that the Brandon Sanderson is doing. I mean, he's got 12 days left. He's sitting at 30.5 million dollars, which just, I mean, honestly, sometimes I just open up the page and watch the numbers scroll up and up. It's just fun. Uh, a, a, a little bit of jealousy, I will admit to but I mean, it's just so incredible. He's, he, he's done such a fantastic job and it's so neat to see. Um, I, it's been really funny to watch the variety of reactions. Uh, I, I follow a lot of agents and editors on Twitter and it was so funny to see the muted reactions from so many of those folks where it almost felt like they didn't even want to talk about it for a while. Um, and I don't know what that was, whether it was just them trying to wrap their brains around it before they shot off their mouths uh, let's be charitable and call it that. Uh, it did feel for a few days there like it was maybe some sour grapes. We're not going to pay attention to the guy who's blowing us out of the water and making our jobs obsolete. I don't know that he's necessarily making their jobs obsolete, um, but there's been plenty of talk in that direction. Um, nobody else can, or, or at least a very small number, can reproduce the kinds of numbers and the kinds kind of excitement that Brandon has generated. But I don't think that that means that nobody else can do what he's doing um, at a smaller scale, right? You, you mentioned Will White, White, I want to say that like a Walter White, but it's not. Um, th the numbers he's doing is incredible for a self-pubber, right? Now, granted, he's been a self-pubber for what, 10 years now, nine, 10 years, and really well, kind of yeah. got in at a great time where he could sell a bunch of copies on Amazon before that market was quite as flooded as it is now. Um, but even still, as long as you've got a, a decent sized audience to bring to the table, you can do the Kickstarter thing so long as they trust you, right? doesn't need to be $30 million. I'm sure uh, Mr. White is happy with his haul so far. I and uh, so. I'll, I'll be yeah, excited sure. to see where it goes. Now, didn't you say he was trying to put these books in bookstores? How does that even work? Well, I, I didn't understand that. So, so that's the other fascinating part uh, of this campaign is that this campaign isn't even really to get new content. Like Brandon's, it's like Brandon's is hey, here's books that like you know I'm not even telling you what they're about. I mean, obviously he does with his reveals, and here's swag bags, and you don't know what you're getting. So there's all this new stuff that he's releasing. For Will White's, what partially blows me away, and, and then Maria, please, I want to hear your thoughts as well, is that this is just for like a reprint of his books. It's really just getting uh, nice leather-bound copies of the first three books in his most popular series, uh, which is his Cradle series. 
uh, and getting using some of their revenue from that to get a lot of books that he can then put in bookstores. So his goal is to be in bookstores. Um, so that's what is just also just fascinating and, and bizarre about this campaign is that it's so successful and it's not even necessarily for what you would, would think it would be for. It's just for nice versions of the books, which people have done before, um, but then also to get into bookstores. It's just cool. Yeah. Which is leading into me um, being the devil's advocate, because of course I have to be, um, in per traditional publishing. I think that it's absolutely fantastic that we're seeing these Kickstarters um, take off. And I think that both Jeff and Cameron have picked up on something that, that I keep thinking about, which is that Sanderson wouldn't be where he is today if he didn't start in traditional publishing, because that's what was popular and more popular when he was publishing. And to Will, Will White's point, as, as Jeff mentioned, uh, he basically invented a genre of a different kind of fantasy. And so what he's established in order to, to develop a strong Kickstarter is to be able to, in, in his own in his own way on Amazon self-publishing, I believe it's just on Amazon, I don't know if it's on Royal Road, Jeff, um, but, but in that way, developing a fan just base Amazon. so that he could, yeah, so that he could eventually go solo. And as I, I think I would describe it, go Taylor Swift where you're such a big part of the industry that you can adapt and mold the industry. And while I think it's really exciting that these Kickstarters are taking off, and I think it's definitely something we're gonna look at more in the future, definitely looking right now at how these Kickstarters are constructed. I'm seeing a lot more, if, if you're still developing a fan base, that there are unfortunately um, more uh, mainstream ways in order to do that. So that by the time you start up your Kickstarter, it can be effective. Um, I spoke to an author at LTUE last year, um, Life, the Universe, and Everything, um, who was publishing solely through Kickstarters. Um, so he developed a fan base through his, his Kickstarter, and he was he was trying to push off that way. And it seemed to be effective in some regards, but he also discussed the the rigorous nature of of providing gifts and and uh, and trying to keep up with what his um, readership required. And his readership was really quite small at that point. Um, so I think Kickstarter is a really interesting tool to use. Um, I, I do think I, I agree with, I think both of you are saying, uh, which is, I mean, it's hard to develop a fan base at first. And wherever the industry is going in the future, whether it's traditional publishing or self-publishing, or my opinion, both still, um, developing that fan base is still going to take time and is going to take work. I, I would completely agree with that. I mean, the the Kickstarter seems the thing you do after. So I'm, I'm fascinated by that story of, someone who was doing it as, as that from the beginning. Um, because yeah, and in, in all these cases, and I, I do want to be clear about this, obviously, Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, number one, but two, when we talked uh, last week about Mother of Learning, th that is like a, a major within the community of uh, free published material on websites on Railroad. Everybody knows Mother of Learning. Everybody knows it for progression fantasy um, as well. And so that's, it's huge. And so it's not that, you know, suddenly with Kickstarter, got it. same with Will White. Everybody that knows about like progression fantasy knows Will White. Um, Cradle is talked about all the time on Reddit fantasy. So this is someone that's it's very popular already as a fan base and then is leveraging uh, that fan base. So yeah, so the, the, this is definitely not solving the question of, you know, how do you get that fan base to start? You know, that could maybe be um, another video. Um, but I think what's cool to see is that taking this sort of next step to, to grow your, your brand, your, your, you know, your market, whatever, um, it does seem like Kickstarter is a, is a place for that, which I think is pretty cool, whether you're traditionally published, self-published, or, uh, and, and again, to, to me, self-publishing is really splintered in, into two separate groups. So self-publishing on Amazon, uh, which again, Will White started, as Cameron says, at a very good time, really got in on it, been doing it for like nine-ish years, uh, and then maybe even longer, I looked up like House of Blades as an early one from him, and he gave away a lot of free giveaways away. And then people that are just releasing totally for free on like Railroad or something like that. Um, so it really, to, to, in, in my mind, it's like traditional self-published on Amazon, self-published for free. And it's just interesting seeing all of those groups right now using Kickstarter and seeing some success with it. But traditional obviously had the most success than self-published on Amazon, than the free one. So. Yeah, I don't think we can exactly sound the death knell for traditional publishing just yet. Uh, and and maybe not ever, right? I mean, those institutions have have, despite their difficulties and contractions over the last few decades, continue to be massively powerful. And 
do the the work that a lot of authors don't want to do like there's no point even even once you've got the audience there's no point even going to kickstarter unless you're willing to do the work to essentially be your own small press to make the contracts with a a, a printer probably overseas and uh go through all of the proofing and buying the artwork and uh doing the editing yourself whereas if you've got a traditional publishing deal somebody else is taking all that care all that crap for you so you can just write your books like ideally you want to do which honestly sounds pretty fantastic if you can get your foot in the door but it is it does feel like still while a riskier move for 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 midlist authors than it used to be still the most likely way to get the largest audience with the least work no matter what you end up doing down the road kickstarter or not yeah um something i want to throw out there as well um is i think i think of the most traditional person in the group in terms of looking at traditional publishing and hyper fixating on that mainly because i don't trust myself to edit my own work um and the the, the idea of giving it to somebody and saying make this better and to help me get it to be published and popular appeals to me um but i think that one of my primary concerns to be completely blunt um, and some, one of my concerns that I've heard with self publishing is sometimes people self publish work without editing it too much or thinking about it too much. And I had a conversation a couple of years ago in my uh, in my English program about wanting to self publish but but having this panic of like if I self publish no one's going to be able to find the good work no one's going to be able to. Uh, develop a solid fan base. And I feel like Will White is a wonderful counter argument of that, of someone who has put in the work, who has done good and solid writing and has been able to develop a fan base. So when I think about that conversation I had three years ago of, well, self-publishing is just kind of like you throw it in the puddle and you hope for the best. I think we're starting to see that's not true, that there are avenues in order to rise and to be acknowledged through self-publishing, which has got me excited in a way that I haven't been excited about self-publishing before. It's really cool to hear. Sorry, Cameron, are you going to say something? I was just going to say, I mean, it, it's unarguable that there is a Pacific garbage patch worth size uh, uh, of self-published works from people who are just like, I wrote a book, but, you know, and out into the world. Uh, those folks, I feel like, while they're muddying the waters for, for everybody else, are unlikely to stick with it long enough. They'll say, ah, it didn't work. Okay, I'm on to something else. Whereas we're far more likely to see the Will Whites and the other folks, maybe they start out mixed in amongst the crap, but as they keep putting out work and over time you gradually grow your fan base to where people start to differentiate you from the one book wonders, the two book wonders that don't edit their stuff. And I mean, it, the the it seems like the requirement for high quality differs in different genres but it feels like especially within fantasy and, and sci-fi um the there, there's a relatively high bar amongst readers they're not just willing to lay their eyes down on anything i could be wrong about that uh but compared to some other genres perhaps a little bit more and i feel like that's a that's a problem that sorts itself out eventually for those who are willing to to stick with it and learn the process and keep revising their works, pay for their own editors if they're if they're self pubbing and putting on Amazon or, or wherever else, um, and eventually create the quality that will pay their bills. Amen. And I only laughed because Jeff laughed. I also think there's a high bar for fantasy and sci-fi, but Jeff just had a look on his face of wanting to say something. Well, so I mean, you caught me, but. Uh... I think there's a lot of different types of readers out there and people read for different reasons, right? And so um, I, I definitely used to be more in, in the camp that you two are, are describing, but I was like, you know, there's got to be a certain uh, level of sentence construction and that sort of thing in order to really get a good number of people to, to read and, and be interested in it. And with the research I, I've been doing over the past few years on free websites, that's just not the case uh, for for a certain group of fandom, right? So I, I don't want to say that you two are wrong. Like, I, I think there are many, 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 many fantasy and sci-fi readers that feel exactly as you two express. Um, and a lot of people don't even know about 
uh, free or self-published channels. Like there are many readers out there who have never even touched a self-published novel because self-published work still has a, a huge stigma related, you know, to it. So, you know, again, you two are not, not wrong in that, but I will say that I was shocked to, to, to discover, uh, you know, stories that were, were blowing up that to me, and by that I mean, you know, lots of views, tops of charts, that sort of thing, that, you know, had some issues uh, from, from a writing standpoint. Like I mentioned Will White's book, you know, House of Blades, like that book's a little, to, to me, a little, you know, it's an early book in someone's writing career. It's a little, you know, rough uh, on the edges. But the reason that he's got that fandom and the reason these people do too is because they're knocking other elements out of the ballpark, right? Like they're, the, the pacing is great or the magic system is cool or the characters are interesting or, you know, you're just into it. Like, it's just like, this is just fun. And it doesn't even matter because I think we hyper-focus, I mean, this is another video, so I'm gonna be very close, but I think it is easy uh, to focus on uh, sentences because they're they're more minute, so they're they're smaller, and so it allows us to feel like I can be in control of this sentence or this paragraph and figure out exactly where these words go and make it beautiful. And there is something wonderful about that. And and there are many readers who want that. You know, there's a reason why Patrick Rothfuss is you know constantly talked about is like oh his sentences, you know his his paragraphs, right? So for sure. But that's not that's not everybody. You know that people are just reading to consume or to enjoy. And they, they know what you mean, even if the comma is not in the right spot, even if you may put a wrong word, so on and so forth. Like, they still get it. They still understand what's happening. We make mistakes all the time in conversations and people know what we mean. So it just really opened my eyes to like, oh, wow, like people can absolutely enjoy and get excited about something that is not as, not, not to me, published ready. Um, and it doesn't matter. So that, that, that was why you saw the reaction that she did. Yeah. Um, and I will throw out there, because I think we're generally talking to writers in our audience um, that I think a lot of it comes down to what you enjoy as a writer and the, the amount of um, content you, you want to produce. I mean, in my program, we had two authors speak to us, uh, Paul Harding and then um, Douglas Stewart, who both published uh, award-winning novels. They're absolutely fantastic. And they spent years and years and years and years on it because their joy in writing um, was focused a lot more on the sentence level, on, on the sentence level construction. And because they enjoy that as a writer, they decided that that's what they were going to focus on with their writing. Um, and I don't think there's any shame in not being that kind of person, in enjoying a good, well-paced story that's focused on um, a magic system or is, is focused on the action in the scenes as opposed to the language. I think it comes down to what appeals to you as a writer and then studying and determining what techniques can help you um, be the kind of writer you wanna be. You compare that kind of writing to somebody like uh, Stephanie Meyer, which I'm not going to crap on her books, even though it, for a while it was very popular to do so. Um, I, I think she's a great example of trending towards the other side, where her sentence level construction, uh, paragraph construction, is fairly basic. Uh, I mean, she's she's got herself a traditional publisher. They're, they're cutting out the typos and whatever else and fixing it up. But from a sentence level, it's pretty blasé but you look at the the way she knows how to propel a plot and to give her readers what they want and people devour it like there there is such a huge fan base for that kind of stuff yeah and uh it, it's undeniable that that is successful work right even if it's not pitch perfect i'm gonna spend the next month focusing on which adverb to use in this sentence you know that was just cool to me to, to sort of see that in my eyes, I think as a writer were open, it felt freer. Uh, and it kind of just as you're describing, uh, Mari, about like, it's okay to be this other type of writer. It's okay to be uh, focused more on becoming better at pacing or better at getting emotional hits or, you know, things like that. And obviously the language and the word choice you use has an impact on that, but that's not, not the only thing, as we're just saying from this. And somebody like Will White is really prolific. Uh, you know, his, I don't even know how many cradle books he's up to now, like more, more, more than 10, uh, you know, he's in the double digits uh, and he's got other series beyond that. So, you know, uh, we're talking about, you said before, someone taking years to write a book uh, versus someone coming out with a book, you know, every, every year or maybe even, you know, twice a year. Um, and I'm not saying that's always the case for uh, Will White, but often. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, what, what brings you joy as a writer, what you want out of it. And I just, the thing that excited me so much of this is the diversity, just showing that there can be multiple paths to success. 
and as a writer, that's like, thank goodness. Okay, like maybe there are a few different ways, uh, you know, we, we can get there. And so I just wanted to, one, have that conversation with you both, because I, I, of course, deeply respect both of your opinions. Um, and also uh, just to have this conversation with, with everybody. Any last thoughts or things? I thought those were beautiful closing words. So I was just kind of sitting on them for a second. Sounds good. Sounds good. I was going to put out just one last thing, just super, super quick, uh, because I happened to catch Brandon talking about it. Um, and also a lot of people have discussed that one of the major downsides and, and something Cameron, you already brought up uh, with the Kickstarter system is getting your work in the hands of people that are internationally based. And so I think that is something that's going to keep traditional publishing going for a while. But it was interesting your Brandon recently talked about uh, two, two new gifts. And one of the things they're doing is because the Kickstarter has gone so well, they're paying duties. Uh, for people uh, that are picking up books internationally. So they're like helping to offset some of those costs. So it is interesting that that's like a, a known stumbling block. I was seeing a lot of people talking about that, about the Kickstarter, like, oh my goodness, it's so expensive if I want them in like Europe, you know, or whatever. Um, so that, that I think will be a continued conversation and it's gonna be interesting to see how people uh, you know, get around it. So I just kind of, kind of putting that there is like, this is, this is cool, we're seeing other ways, but there's definitely still this piece and I wonder what's going to happen with it over time. But uh, great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, love to hear your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you next time.